Hello. 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 Hi, Daisy. How's it going? Hi. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for uh, having me. We're excited. So everyone, this is uh, Daisy, VH1's Rock of Love, season two with Brett Michaels. And she also had her own spinoff uh, series, Daisy of Love. So thank you again for joining us. I'm thank Darcy. You Hello, and nice to meet you. Is, um, nice. You can introduce yourself, love. Well, introduce yourself. OK, so hi, baby. My Hello. Name is Kenyatta. And I'm a current fan, and I, you know, do research as well. And I would like to get to know you more in this interview and get to know the in-depth of certain things. And, you know, carry it from there. Awesome. Thank you. I look forward to it. And then we've got Bad Girls Positivity in the corner. He may or may not jump in from time to time. Um, cool. So let's get started. So first and foremost, obviously, how did you come across going on Rock of Love? Um, uh, it all started, um, when it was way back in the MySpace days <laughs> and I, I was watching the first season of Rock of Love and I actually, uh, I, I had been friends, uh, briefly with Cece DeVille and so it was kind of funny at the time me and my, uh, then now ex-boyfriend, we were watching it and we, we were just, we just thought it was like the most hilarious thing that we've ever seen. It, it was, it was so like, just given the fact that I was, you know, have been uh, briefly friends with CC DeVille. Um, and so, you know, I was, I, I, I do, I did make music and, and stuff and also, um, I had been doing, you know, uh, working as a, as an aspiring actress and I just happened to be like, I think it was like by the grace of God, really, that just, prompted me to just go to the computer and look for a casting director just randomly. You know, I was like, you know what? I bet they're going to cast. I'm like, there's, there's going to definitely be a second season. I just knew because it was so popular. It was just so like outrageously awesome that I was like, there's no way that like they, they're not going to you know do this again. So I just, um, went to the computer and found a casting director and his name was, um, a man by the name of Brandon Blinko and I wrote him and I was just like, hi, you know, my name is Daisy and I would, I would really like to be on, you know, the next season. And, um, strangely enough, they had actually, uh, already casted the, the show already. It was like, you know, already, already done a done deal. But the, the, he was, Brandon was like, um, well, if you send a videotape within like the next three days, then, you know, I'll see, we'll see what, what will happen. And I, and I was like, okay. So I, I randomly went to like, like my acting studio and I sent in this stupid video of me like playing guitar and I made up this little song and like dedicated it to Brett Michaels. And then, and then like literally within a week, uh, they sent me, they were like, you know, here's all the paperwork you need to sign and you know after you sign that then we'll see and i i signed the paperwork and and then within like a week i was like flown out to like like some uh location in california and they were like doing a psych evaluation and then the next thing i knew i was like on the show and they were like well we you know since we've already done like you 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 really uh, done the casting um you know you really just like made the cut basically so it was really like a miracle and, and the grace of of like god or like the holy spirit or something that like really just like sort of drove me towards this like thing to like do it how long were you like did they put you in a hotel i assumed first right before you went to the house or did you like how long were you in the hotel before you went it was so so it's been like so it's such a long a while ago but um Forever, i'm pretty yeah. sure it was like um like they i don't think i don't think they flew me back like it was like they flew me out they flew me to a hotel they flew all the all the the um possible castmates to a hotel and we all sort of had this like psychic or not psychic this like uh, uh like a, a, psych a psychological evaluation basically to make sure that we weren't like super like off the charts <laughs> like that we weren't gonna like because it's, it's actually like a very um it's very psychological kind of situation that we that we were all put in and so they you know we after we sort of past that moment of it then i then it was the next thing we were we were on on set and you know i just remember um with, with like 20 different girls you know and um the one of the um producers and creators of the show mark cronin he 
you know, we, after we were doing like sort of like this little filming of like all the girls, you know, see, okay, everybody stand in like a line. Like let's everybody get like a big camera shot of all the, all the girls and you know, the screen makes noise, blah, blah. Then we were like, um, he comes out and he's like, you know, congratulations ladies. You know, you guys, the, you guys are, you know, like 20 out of like thousands and hundreds of thousands, of, you know, I don't know, some like crazy number of people were just like, Oh, it's so like, you know, so it was really just like, just wow. You know, it was, it was like one moment I was writing the person on my space and the next thing I know was like on the set. I'm like, this is crazy. This is like surreal, you know? So, <laughs> but yeah, the, we were in the hotel for probably like a day or day or two, maybe, maybe three days, but I don't think it was very long. Um, and then after that, you know, we, they, they probably sent like some people home and it was like, you know, it was like rounds basically. And how would you describe the vibe and the energy of the girls? And how was the feeling of you meeting Brett for the first time? Good question. <laughs> well, it was all um, very nerve wracking. You know, it was very scary. It was very intimidating. Um, the girls were definitely intimidating. You know, it was sort of, um, I mean, these women are, I, I felt, you know, being just in my no normal everyday life, feeling like, oh, I'm so fabulous. And like, you know, and then so, you know, and then I get in this room with all these other fat, like really, like, no, I'm not saying, you know, there's a lot of fabulous women that I'm always around, but it's just this different kind of personality type where you're like the center, you're, you're the center of the attention, but now you're in a room filled with 20 other women that have the same kind of energy. And it's, and it is, it is it, like, it kind of, it really actually, um, I felt very, um, sort of not like inadequate, but like, I, I definitely didn't feel like my normal, like charming, like, you know, like I got this kind of self. I, I was really sort of just like, Oh no. Like, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't feel like I stood out at all at all. And it was, um, so it was, it was kind of humbling, but also just, you know, I felt really awkward and just weird. What were some things that you wish here that didn't that the viewers didn't get to see on the show? Um, I don't really know. That's a, that's a good question. I re I really never thought I've never really thought of that. I mean, a lot of it probably. I, think, gave I, think, I think it would be cool if they, if they said if like someday maybe they did like a whole like sort of outtake of the whole entire you know s scenes that were just never no one ever saw and just sort of like. I don't know, maybe like parts of where it was like, you know, the cameras, the cameras were on us like 24 hours a day, except if we were sleeping or obviously like in the restroom. Um, and if we, if we were like, when we were like, all right, we're going to bed, you know, like three in the morning, whatever. And then as, you know, women, girls tend to do when they're in a room together and we're like talking about other, other shit and they like come, come running into the camera. They're like, are you guys talking? We're sure like, the lights are on. We're like, no, we're going to bed. They're like, if you guys are talking, we got to be in here. And I'm like, we're just talking about like fucking slumber party shit. Like, <laughs> so, well, how um, long... but that... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. How long ago was Rock of Love for you? Um, I filmed Rock of Love in the fall of 2007, I think. And then Actually. We'll, we'll talk more about Daisy of Love, like down the line, we'll do Rock of Love first, but how immediately after you filmed Rock of Love were you doing your show? It was about a, like a year or two later. It was like in 2009, I do believe, is when we actually when we started the filming and it, it didn't really last very long. It only lasted a month. It was a really short, it was a pretty quick film, which is typical. And, um, it, but at first I was, I was, I was sort of tricked. They, they told me that I was, they wanted me on charm school. And, and I was like, all right, I, I was living in uh, Denver, Colorado at the time where I, I grew up and I was, I was born in California. So I'm, if you can't tell by my accent, I'm, I'm clearly a California, California girl, but, um, <laughs> something that like plagued me like everywhere I go. But, yeah. um, and so I was, I was living and I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm finally ready to move to California. Like for sure, for real now, you know, like for sure. And I, you know, the, the person I was seeing, I was like, you know, we, we definitely like parted our ways and, and, um, they, they were like, you know, telling me that I was going to be on charm school. And then they, then they wanted, I, so when I, I think I took like a, like a, it was like a week before something. I like officially moved out there and they took me out to dinner and they were like, they're like, yeah, so guess what? Like, we're not going to be on charm school, but, um, 
you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, we want you to have your own show. And I was just like, oh my God, like, shut up. Like, I was so like, just like, oh my God, this is like the greatest yeah. thing I've ever, like, so exciting and just so like, just so like a fairy tale, you know, just everything you could ever, you know, any book that could, you could say like that, you know, your dreams coming true could really be any more magical. And I'm so grateful for that. But, um, and so then, you know, the course of filming didn't, um, happen for like another, like, um, a few months so i was you know i was like broken poor like dying in the street of like la like guys are we gonna film yet like <laughs> but it was you know so yeah it was it was like a, a couple of year like year or two before you know the next they usually they usually film the shows pretty quick so you know they were they were you know really on it it was there's such a high demand so how long was um rock of love's filming like in comparison to your show were you there a lot what? longer for that one um, no, I think it was about, the, it was the same length. They, they, it was a month. I mean, really, like, only one psychologically could probably only really handle, like, a month of that, like, kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty, um, it's, in, it's an intense process, to be honest with you. It's, it's very, um, you know, like, uh, all the time I was constantly thinking of it, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, is, I'm like, what is really happening here right now? Like, so it was constantly just, like, my stomach was constantly in knots, and it was just really just a really interesting process it was it, 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 that was more so for um rock of love than it was for daisy of love for daisy of love i knew what was what was happening like i knew what was going on you know i knew my feelings i knew you know what i was thinking and feeling was was legitimate and it was okay and like you know but for rock of love i was just like constantly in a disarray of like am i doing the right thing like what's going on like what the fuck is happening right now <laughs> <laughs> Like, I just remember being like, like one day, like my, I was like, my stomach hurts so bad because I'm so stressed out, like over this weird situation. <laughs> I, I, I honestly did not know it was going to be like that either. Like, I really had no idea that I was going to be that in like such turmoil like, the whole entire time. I was like, what the hell did I sign up for? <laughs> You'd never you be able to tell that you felt that way from watching it. Like, I just rewatched <laughs> it a couple, like. It's on Tubi, so I watched it like a couple months back, and then in anticipation of this, I just rewatched both of them. And you couldn't, you would have never guessed that you felt that way, like as really? a viewer. <laughs> yeah, like as a viewer, you came off very confident. Kind yeah, of. Like I was you shitting like I was like shitting bed. bricks the whole entire time. I was just like, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like going to bed, like praying to Jesus, like what's happening? <laughs> Am I doing the right thing, Lord? <laughs> so one thing that a lot of people wanted to know. Um, were you actively in a relationship when you went on to the show? Um, no, I wasn't. And that, that was exactly how it was. Like, I didn't actually, I had no idea that they were going to call on upon that person, Charles Edward, who at the time was, we were, um, we were in an, a relationship that had ended, I mean, years ago, but we were so actively involved in each other's life, mostly in through our careers and mostly him with mine. And so our lives were very intertwined and it was just like one of those things where, you know, it was, it was basically like being, getting a divorce, you know, it was like, we were best friends. So we weren't ill willed on each other, which was, you know, which is a miracle. Um, but we had been together that long and, and been basically married and it just, it just wasn't working anymore in, in many ways, but we were still actually really good friends. Like we vibed like in those in that sense and in a business sense like really well like we just got along really great you know we weren't we never really fought a lot but then in other ways it was just not a, a thing but so as you know as as relationships are you know it was a thing that was you know we were just sort it's sort of just like it was, you know it's kind of private private to say and a little weird but you know it's just one of those things where your relationship is sort of dead in the water but it was we really cared about each other and, and, our, and our lives were so you know and at that time he, he was very involved in, in helping me gain confidence and and really you know really be there for me um i love your but put a little makeup um be there for me as um as a friend and as a person supporting me throughout my you know beginning initial stages of of be, you know being who i am and um i'm really grateful for that because it, you know he was a re he's a really strong person and i needed i needed that I, I didn't have anybody else you know had nobody else in my life ever to be that um so just you know like a cheerleader of like you you know and basically gave me that love and that confidence and and really um i don't, I don't want to say like groomed me but just you know let me see that i was a, a capable person 
and I'm, and that's a rare a rare kind of weird situation but at the time when i you know he knew i was going on the show and and, and i mean i mean that was if anything was going to be the end of our relationship it was definitely that you know it was definitely like that's the nail in the coffin for sure like yeah. like peace out like i'm gonna go do the show but it was still like understood that it, like this is this is a tv show you know this is a this is a job basically but it was also sort of like an unspoken thing that was like you know what we're growing apart we are going our separate ways and that was sort of like the you know the farewell like you know hey like i love you and everything and now it's you know now i'm gonna go off and do what i was meant to and want to do and you know and then and then randomly he was like what are you doing on the show like <laughs> so that, that was definitely a surprise so that was, i was like what the fuck but what you know his his um influence was you know very very it was nice it was nice to have a person there that really had my back for sure you know did you move yeah. back in with him after you left the show? Because that's where you were living. Um, we were left, so we right? were living together, obviously. When or not obviously, but when we when I did that show, we were still we were still living together. And as soon as the show was done, immediately I I, I left LA. And he, you know, it was it was just time for us. It was finally time for us to actually like split. Like our relationship, you know, in other ways, it was it was way over. You know, it was way way dead and gone. But um, we, you know, as like I said, we we were in, you know, we were in business together and we were um you know we were in part we lived together and you know we were we were very very it was you know it was very much like a, a, a an amicable divorce and um and, and i was like you know that this is and he understood you know he's like yeah you know that makes sense you know it's pretty obvious that this is these things were you know and i had been wanting us to go to you know la it was, it was just all made sense you know but it wasn't you know we weren't in some deep romantic <laughs> like like you know relationship that was that ended unfortunately you know and then that's just sometimes you know what happens and um when we come when it comes to relationships and it's a little it is a little weird that my my most personal 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 life you know became deeply sort of entwined um which i never intended so but it was you know all that, that that was definitely a legitimately a legitimate thing that it was not you know we i was you know i was not romantically involved with that person for, for a very long time just pushed it pretty much now prior to you being oh. no go ahead now prior to you being on the rock of love compared to your spinoff what were some of the things that you had more leeway on compared to when you were in the house with brett oh my god like every every moment of every second of everything like i mean i had to, i even like you know i i even sort of you know made up like little idea you know idea like ideas just i had it was just everything everything there was no you know in rock of love there was no moment of like anything that we knew nobody knew what the hell was going to happen at any second it was just like surprise you're all going to eat fire and we're like yay <laughs> so um, but like there was there there were probably not really many surprises on daisy love because it was full on like a, a team effort of like you know what do i like what you know these things so that they could really develop the show around me and then you know there were some moments when i <laughs> probably should have not you know met, you know set overstepped my boundary when i you know when i was like oh this would be really cool if like what if we did this or something and and, and i was really lucky and, and thankful that they they like you know at a couple moments they like humored me and and listened to me you know my ideas and i think and i think that was really cool so it was very m much different you know compared to a rock of love where it was just like what the fuck's gonna happen today <laughs> so the, the, the guys were like the on the other side you know they had they had that experience at that and um on my show you know they were I, at least i think they, that's sort of like what they were going through was just like what's gonna happen today <laughs> like <laughs> What we had in <laughs> so you get into the house and obviously it's really intimidating and you're like, okay, this, what did I sign up for? Um, we, we like to do a little bit of a roll call, but I'm, it's so long ago. We won't do like all of the girls. Cause I'm assuming you probably don't remember all of the girls, but the one girl that I want to start out with is, do you remember the first girl who got way too drunk? Her name was Courtney and she passed out and she, she missed out on elimination. I, I actually I I, I don't <laughs> but, like, but that sounds from that sounds yeah that sounds possible a lot of the girls were taking care of her and there's one scene that I really loved because you just like you saw them all taking care of her and you were just like bitch I can't be bothered with this <laughs> like, I'm busy um okay so after her 
Okay, do you, we'll start off with, do you remember Frenchie? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Who doesn't remember Frenchie? I mean, like, hello. <laughs> She's probably like, the most popular out of all of us. <laughs> so basically, like, are there any stories with her? Any, like, with any of these people, any stories, good, bad, anything that we didn't see? I don't know if I could, like, say them without, you know, without their permission. I mean, I mean you know, Frenchie, um, she's a really, a really sweet person. She's a very hard worker. Um, she, if anyone out of them, you know, she, out of us all, she really deserves, you know, her own show for sure. I mean, she really just, and she's very generous as a, as a person. And, and, you know, she probably got a lot of, a lot of, maybe even some of the most um, flack you know, out of everybody because of, because of the way she, you know, is and her friendship, you know, fencing and the, the and, but she doesn't care. She, she owned it. And I think that's really nice, you know, cause it, it's not, it's not always a, ni a fun thing to be famous or, to, you know, to, for people to know you because then you're, then they want to, you know, then they, they criticize you as well. And, um, so that can be really hard, but you know, her, I really, I really, um, admire and respect because she really, um, didn't let that stop her at all. She, and she was very generous and always, you know, you know, we need to do this and da, da, da. so, um, so she's, she's really cool. I, I really enjoy her and she's a very hard worker and she, she deserves, you know, every, everything that she's had, she's really worked hard for and it's, and she really, she, you know, she really capitalized on who she was and her, oh my gosh, what is that? That's my dog. Oh my god! Hi, buddy. Oh, oh my god! Who is who is that? It's a What's girl. His name? her name is Joy. Joy, she. Oh my god, so cute. Hi, Joy. <laughs> okay, so after, um, also, really good thing to say too is, um, she did really handle that well because I think that's why on Bad Girls Positivity, what we're trying to do is express, like, you know, it's a show. And it's also been a lot of different, like it's been many years since a lot of people have done them. So there's growth and there's more than just what we see. So it's more instead of just getting all of the tea, it's more so people can understand that, you know, like especially people like Frenchie, I know personally she got a lot of hate online because I've seen it. Yeah. Um, so good for that. Do you remember Audrey? Yeah. Yes. Any, any stories or anything to say on her? Um, I mean, we all, like, there are definitely, like, a handful of us that sort of just already, that just after the show, we just naturally ran kind of, like, in the same circle, the same kind of friends, and same sort of just vibe, you know, and, you know, I, I think of them as peers and sort of, like, co-workers or whatnot, you know, that we, you know, we did a job and we, you know, we, we ran, it ran its course or whatnot, and, you know, we, uh, you know, at the time it was, you know, um, she, you know, she, went off and did her thing and and um again you know um being in la sort of a lot of us were a little bit some of us were closer with each other because we you know sort of went ran in the same sort of circle of yeah. people and and had the same kind of um ambitions and 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 you know stuff like that so so after Do you still keep Audrey... in con contact oh, with sorry go ahead girl? um i i've you know uh, I'm in co I'm in contact with like I'm friends you know like I say I I feel like I'm pretty decent friends um, with people like Farah who wasn't on my show but she, Farah and Ashley who I, I adore adore they're just so funny they're so cute and they're they're you know they've been super supportive of me and you know I think it's I think it's important just that we as women even that we just support each other and you know and support our you know as what we did and you know remain you know, and, and, and sort of have our, you know, a close sort of, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a camaraderie and it's a little, it's a bonding kind of thing. And so, um, them along with, you know, Frenchie, you know, we're, we're friends and, and, and Chrissy Joe and, um, and, and Megan, you know, I was friends with her for a while. You know, she, she went off and definitely did her own life as most of us have, but, you know, those are sort of the people that I have sort of just by just chance, just from online and everything like that, that we have, we remain friends. Um, yeah. Um, something um the fans wanted to know as well was like, what made you like disappear like after your um after your own show? Your own show was called Daisy of Love, but some of them um like there was a rumor saying that like you disappeared with with a guy or something like after like meaning like disappeared from like the spotlight. So like, what made you like do that? Um, I suppose you know from an outside perspective that I could see how that might be sort of uh the notation um i did fall you know in in into a very very serious relationship for quite some time um and it's still so pretty prevalent right now and um it really um gave me a chance to just like live my life 
like a you know a normal person for a little bit. I'm not that I, you know, I mean, it was for, you know for a long time it was just touring and 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 appearances and and lots of work, and I'm very grateful for that. And and sort of you know not really doing like a lot of normal people things. And then um you know I had some brief you know relationships, but then I, I you know I I, I um decided that I, I was, I just, there was a moment where I just didn't feel like I wanted to do anything um, that I was doing anymore because I felt um, a little disheartened just by various things. And, um, and so I, I, you know, I, I had known this person for quite some time and, you know, we just, it just randomly sort of happened by chance. And then, and then, you know, and then we just, and then I just ended up being able to live my life in, a, in an extraordinary way. You know, I was, you know, I went to France and I, and I started you know, deciding that I wanted to go back to school and sort of, you know, kind of, um, take a break from things in order to, um, be, you know, in, just sort of in, evolve myself a little bit and, and, and really find who I am as a person and as an artist and, and, um, and, um, grow from my experience and do things that I was unable to do in my, in, in my childhood and, and stuff like that. That was really sort of like where that led me. And, and I was really, I'm really grateful for that moment. And so, and in school, you know, it's a very, it's a very, um, focus thing and unfortunately I can only really focus on like you know so I you know when I made that decision to go back to school I and really sort of you know find out who I am as a person and 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 and, and you know educate myself a little bit more um I didn't realize it was gonna take so long <laughs> my this is taking forever <laughs> what did you take in school um I'm still currently in school as I'm, I'm going from like my you know, like my doctrine or something. Um, I, I study um, like anthropology and the, the social sciences. Basically, is is a big part of what I what I study and what I really you know find. Uh, and I just think I was ready to take a different avenue of my life where I always felt that I would wanted to do more like philanthropy and and um, you know good things for the world and, and use whatever moment that I had to to sort of like be a voice for other things and you know sometimes you get caught up in you know not everyone but some people can get caught up in the, the situation and I started to get caught up a couple of times and I was like wait a minute like you know I, I really wanted to also do this not only because I love entertaining and I love you know entertaining people and, and doing all those things but I also because I want to help people and I wanted to you know really be a voice and and a leader for people that might need me or, or you know might need that voice so that's where I, I sort of like step back and you know redefine myself and, and my goals awesome we'll skip a lot of these girls then um i'll just ask you about like the last couple so megan do you have any mm -hmm. funny stories or favorite memories from when you guys filmed together and i do know like you guys seemed like you guys did hang out after you filmed right yeah, we did, we did some appearances together and we were, you know, we were, um, I love Megan. I think she's hilarious. I think she's so funny. Also, whenever I think of Megan, I just think of her, like, I just think, I'm, I just envision her, like, in her little bikini, holding her little glass and, and just, like, a big smile on her face, you know, and, and her little, and she's just so, she's, like, so mischievous. And um, I don't know if I have any, I mean, you know, I, I, as far as, like, you know, you know, stories from the show. I just, you know, she was just really, really funny. Just a really funny girl. I think she had like her little dog at one point. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I like love that little dog. That little dog was so funny. Like, he's like, <laughs> I'm surprised they let her bring it on the show. I find that kind of crazy. It was only just like a moment, and I don't know what happened. She had it for only just a moment. She didn't have it like the whole show. I don't think. So, um, so she no, went you, like stay like up stage, everybody. Like, like, let's talk about let's talk to the dog again. <laughs> Megan did. I think out of all of the cast from Rock of Love, I think Megan did the most shows. Af like out of anyone on the cast, because Megan did. Rock of Love, then she did Charm School, then she did I Love Money, mm -hmm. and then she had Megan Wants a Millionaire. Mm -hmm. Which, also, when I ask questions, if you don't want to answer any of them, you don't have to, but I will ask some. Um, do you know, because you have some of the behind the scenes tea, was Megan only offered mm -hmm. a TV show because Sharon attacked her at the reunion? Cause that's... Oh no, I, I have no idea. I wasn't cause, because I wasn't at the charm school reunion, so I have no no information about that to be honest. But I don't think it was. I think they had. Do you they, think they, 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 they pretty much like plan these? They plan these things pretty right. I mean, it, they're like 
they're pretty, in, you know, intuitive about what's going to happen. So it's, you know, it's, but I, I don't know. I have no idea, to be honest. I, I have zero information about that. Because I think it was supposed to come out. Do you know if it was, um, like, do you know if they were filming around the same time you were? The Megan of Love? The Megan wants, a, Megan wants a Millionaire? Yeah. Do you know if they were, like, filming around the same time or? Um, I don't really remember. I, I don't think it was. I think it was like, they usually film like one. So it was probably like, it was probably after my show, they probably went off and they filmed um, Megan Wants a Millionaire, but I'm not really positive about that. And then, you know, the, that unfortunate incident that happened was basically, you know, kind of like a, a, a career sinker for a lot of us um, with the person who, you know, went off the deep end. And that's sort of also why we do, they, you know, people do those psych psychological evaluations beforehand before they really, you know, choose people they they you know there's they vet people because it's you know it's not something that everybody can necessarily do because if you're sort of if you're sort of like lost in reality you're like what the like me so i was like is this fucking real or like what? like i'm like literally like every day like is this real or is this fake is this real or is this fake i can't tell <laughs> like but yeah. you know like i took it as you know being entertainment but you know it's definitely um that was a scary sort of unfortunate thing that happened and you know and otherwise i don't really know much about um, her particular, you know, uh, situation. Do you still keep in contact with some of the guys from your past? Um, I, I'm not like opposed to like, not con in contact with people, you know, people sort of, we go, you know, it's in the entertainment industry, people, you know, we, you build close bonds, you know, because you're so intense with everybody for so long and, you know, and then that's great. And then, um, but then, you know, we, then you have your real life and then you have another project that you, you know, sort of the same kind of thing. So it's kind of just the same process. And I have no, um, nothing against anybody. I think they're great people. And I'm, I'm so happy that they were a part of my journey and my, and my experience and, and my life and my, and, and I got to work with them and, and meet them and know them. And, um, you know, I, I, I you know, every once in a while, maybe like, you know, um, uh, um, sinister, you know, or, um, you know, um, you know, from time to time, you know, Josh and, um, and, 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 uh, 12 pack, you know, sometimes and, and, you know, just so. Shout out uh, to Dave. Hey, yeah. Dave. Shout out Dave. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Okay. So we're going to jump to destiny. So we're just going to do the last two girls. Okay. Do you have any like favorite stories or memories? I know that you guys, a lot of the fans too, that just rewatched it, um, Vegas, which we all kind of want to talk about because I don't know why the girls hated you so much, but um, do you have anything to touch base on with Destiny and like the whole Vegas situation, like with her and Heather and all the girls? Um, you know, like I really, like, you know, at the time when it was happening, it was, you know, it was a really stressful situation, but there was never any sight of my own self. I don't know about them. For them, I don't know what they're what they were really going through or what they were thinking or what their motives were like, you know, but part of me, you know, as an entertainer was like, you know, this is, you know, I'm very versed in, in the skill of improv and that's something that I actually have like a huge background in. So I just went with everything. Um, and I am a really emotional person. So, you know, these, these emotions, those emotions were mostly genuine because it was, just, you know, it was like, like, why is everybody like, hey, like, it, but, but it, that was also um, a producer kind of situation. You know, the producers found yeah. something like something about me in particular, yeah. which I'm kind of grateful for, but like, you know, I'm like, okay. You know, the, I think they, they were like, at first they were like, you know what, you know, Daisy, like you were kind of being boring. And then suddenly we got this like little tidbit information, this little tip. And then we were like, Oh, juicy. And I was just like, wow, thanks. And then, and then I like sort of like set everything on fire. Cause they were like, yeah, we're actually getting ready to like, sort of get like, uh, get, um, cast you off because you weren't, you didn't see, you were kind of flat. And I was like, and I, I felt, I felt flat. I was like, this is, I don't really, there's nothing really spectacular like about me, you know, like being in this room with all these really amazing, beautiful, talented, you know, super cool women. And I'm just sort of just like, like, bleh, you know, so I'm like, so then they found this like one little blip of my life. And that really sort of just, just, it wrote itself, you know, it really wrote itself. And so it just, it just, it, it was natural, but it was also, you know, it was, it was, it was contrived, not, not on my end, but on the producer's end, for sure. 
So that leaves us with our final girl, Amber. So that the winner, the girl who took <laughs> bread away from you. Um, do you have any like fun memories or anything, like any fun stories with her? Like, were you guys cool on set? Were you friends in the house, really? <clears throat> I mean, I never really, Amber's kind of like, probably was like what I was to the producers, you know, just really nonchalant. It was just, and so I never really, I think that's probably the funny part of it. You know, she's sort of like the background, like the <laughs> background music or something. But, um, and then it was just like, it's kind of, it is kind of weird to think about like us two sort of being like the focal point of Bench League. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I remember mostly um you know the very the finale the finale of it and and that was a really fun time that was so fun it was so kind of chaotic and that was sort of like all right now it's like it's like you know um now it's 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 die you know not, uh, a do or die kind of thing and i just remember you know getting really wasted and and drinking a lot of vodka and she was just like what are you doing i'm like i'm i'm having a breakdown amber like leave me alone mm -hmm. so yeah and then yeah i think and then but then like she really got like you know and and uh, you know I don't have anything against her for it because you know whatever you did was whatever you did um on the show and for the show but you know there were moments where she got like really like vicious I was like geez I was like why are you so crappy to me now all of a sudden because I think we were like kind of vibing as as allies at first but I guess you know that's the name of the game so after the very after it gets to the end everyone kind of got a little catty. I think too though, it's like they take away your TV, they take away your phones. Yeah. You have like I don't I can't remember. Did you guys have computer access in the house? Oh no. No, no way. Nothing. No. no way. Um okay, so that brings us to our last person to talk about for this. Brett Michaels. So everyone wants to know, did you actually like him or Um, of course I liked him as a person and you know, I I wasn't somebody who had to be honest, like, it wasn't like, oh, my God. But, you know, I'm not going to complain if Brett Michaels wanted me to be his girlfriend. I'm not going to be, like, you know. But, um, and then, you know, whatever, you know, chemistry is a weird thing. So, um, you know, but I, I don't have any negative things about it. I don't really have any, I'm pretty, I'm kind of, like, neutral about the situation. You know, I don't really, it's sort of just like, you know, he's, he's a really nice guy. Um, very fun to work with. Very talented man, and, I, and I'm very grateful to be a part of his life and his journey and his, you know, his um, thing. And if it wasn't for him and all that, then you know, I would never exist in the first place. So, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful to be to have had that experience. And you know, and 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 you know, beyond that, though, I was a, po a, a poison fan because I'm a music, you know, sort of a, a musical person and i you know i grew up on that music that was the kind of music that i listened to when i was a kid you know a really young kid and and, and those are the kind of people that i actually just more more so wanted to be like as a musician because you know there was not a lot there's not a lot of females in the rock industry and sort of you know so sort of you know listening to them and 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 sort of emulating them as as a as a a budding musician or whatever so in that sense it's neat because it's like oh you're like i'm you know you get to meet your heroes in a sense so that that was really cool do you still talk to him um unfortunately i have not spoke with brett I, you know I, I haven't i haven't gone to like any concerts or anything and that's just normal it's just a normal thing it's mm -hmm. just the way life is and just you know the way that things sort of go and you know so I, I i hope he's doing well and i wish him the best and i'm and you know i'm so appreciative for everything that's you know, come about through that, you know, whole thing. And, I, and I'll always be really grateful to him and to, and to the producers and the cast members and everything. Thank you, Brett Michaels. For yes, thank you, Brett Michaels. Yes, thank you. Um, so I have one more question before we move on. And then, of course, if you want to ask any more questions on Rock of Love, then we can jump on to Daisies. Um, so a lot of people think that the fight with, between you and Heather on the stage was that was that fake also was was the show scripted i could say like the, if there was one moment that like was the absolute 100 percent realist moment for me um that was the fight and i had already um so i had been getting this vibe basically like the whole like you know and, and heather she definitely just did not like me like for real i guess and i was really saddened by that because i really liked her um when i watched her on the show i was like oh yeah heather you know heather's like fucking badass and whatever and we were like rooting for heather and i actually knew lacy prior to the show as well just from being musicians together 
And so we were like, you know, that's another reason why I had watched the show and it was sort of like funny, a funny thing, you know, like laughing about, like, oh my God, and you go, it's like Lacey, what the, you know, what's going on? It's so funny. And um, so it was kind of ironic in that sense. And then um, when the reunion show had come up, there was all of a sudden sort of like this weird energy that yeah. I started to get a drift that like something was up because, you know, the, the producers were notorious for doing things that were just going to make, like, you know, set you off somehow. You know, and I, I like let them. I, I was okay with it. I was okay to, for them to push my buttons and, and to, for them to know how to push my buttons, you know, to, for, so they can get something entertaining. <laughs> and, um, and, but I was like, listen, I was like, um, everyone's like, oh, I think Heather, there's going to be, but Heather's going to beat you up or something. And then I was like, what? And I went to the producer and I, one of the, um, people and I said, you know, what's going on? Like, I can hear this and I, I'm not cool with that. Like, I, I won't go out and, and do this and because I, like, I just got my hair done. <laughs> like, I have these, like, six, six inch heel stilettos on and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not in the vibe to try to fight people. You know, I, that's part of my life that actually as a child, I grew up with a lot of violence and a lot of constantly having to uh, fend for myself and you know for whatever reason women were constantly you know females didn't like me a lot and they they really wanted to beat me up a lot so i was constantly being beat up and you know but i, I always um believed in sticking up for yourself and, and no matter what you know no matter what the case was and there was a lot of times where i you know was in over my head but i just strongly believed as a child growing up that like no matter what like i'm not gonna let anybody push me around push me down you know or or try to hurt me or do anything and, and i fought for my life my whole life to make sure that that was never the case which happened quite often and so I could have, you know, possibly handled things differently, but it was just the producers. I just felt like they just knew they just knew how to, you know, and they promised me, Oh no, 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 you're fine. Everything's fine. So we went out there. I, I could feel myself, you know, there was, there was definitely a realistic, like dislike content for me from Heather. And I just, I just couldn't, you know, personally, I, I just couldn't, I do, I was just unable to control my myself. And I just, she just pushed the right buttons. And the, the really scary part is, is like, we were on a stage that was like, like, at least like, maybe like four feet off the ground. And I was, you know, it could have been, it could have been, you know, something like that. And I was wearing like six inch stilettos. And when I got up, and, and, and I, I was just, I was, I had enough. I just, I snapped. Like that was my moment. I became unhinged, like for real. And I was just, I was just so sick of like, you know, her, whatever she was, was happening. And then she pushed me and I literally fell off the stage. But if it wasn't for Ricky Rackman miraculously somehow being like right there in the perfect moment, I would have fell off the stage and, and probably hurt myself. But I, I, I grabbed onto him like, so like, cause she pushed me like really hard. And I grabbed on him so fiercely to like, you know, and I'm in sick, like, like hills that were like this big. And so I, and I was like, damn it. I knew it. I was like, now I'm going to have to ruin my hair. And I, and I was just like, like instantly, like I like thought really quick and like grabbed onto him and pulled myself up. And then that's sort of like, you know, when she, you know, she had me and, and that was a real moment and that was an unfortunate moment. And, you know, I, did, I really didn't like you know I sort of just like let it happen because I was more concerned about my hair than anything I was like bitch I just got this hair done I was like I knew it like you know because I've been in so many fights where like you know people put your hair on my and I just I just but you know that was you know again I I do believe in you know now nowadays I you know I, would, I definitely wouldn't want that to happen and you know to be provoked and I don't condone violence or anything like that at all because I grew up in such a tumultuous um childhood so it's not something that i i i sit well with me it's very emotional it's very it's very you know and, and yeah um so the second part is how much of the show was like was part of it scripted how much of it was is what i'm seeing from a lot of the fans here <laughs> i don't want to like give away all the, the secrets you know like i feel like i don't want to ruin the you know tv magic for everybody but um i the, the these shows are very um you know there's no there's no script um in the sense there are moments where there's a storyline mm -hmm. and there's um you know there's a there's a storyline to follow so like you know as a as a producer as a writer as somebody who's you know like a you know a line director and so all these things that like has has the job to like create a show you have to have a certain sort of outline and sort of um 
you know, tiny bit of a, of a script of like, this is how you want it to go. This is my, this might, maybe these words might help, you know, um, sort of propel the story. So they might feed you a line maybe because they, they need to create, you know, what they're, they're after content. Otherwise it it could be just, just a bunch of nonsense, you know? So they have to keep it like in, in a, in a, in a square, you know, for the, but it's still as like being like, you know, a non-scripted thing because it's like, you go in, you just, act you know you just do you don't have any real there's no real rules there's no except you know you don't talk to the camera man obviously <laughs> but like yeah. you know break, you don't break the fourth wall and um and but if things you know but that's the um part of also why you know you're locked away you don't have access to your phone you don't have any access to anything um, you know for for um you know non-disclosure parts but also because it keeps you like it really gets you in a mindset of like this shit is just all about bread Michael. <laughs> like i'm living in here for bread <laughs> so um but you know it, otherwise you know you get like a bunch of people and they get them drunk and they're just gonna be maybe shooting the shit about all kinds of random shit and then, and then you got no then you're wasting your time you're wasting you know you're wasting like a bunch of money you know so you yeah. got to keep people on you got to keep people on track you got to keep people focused you know as far as like what's going on and then you know to create a little bit of drama of course behind our backs you know a producer will you know make up their own like a little way they they find little things about you and each person and they kind of whispered into like they you know they like an opponent's ear you know and it's sort of like oh you know i found this like little thing out about like so and so you should confront them about it and they're like yeah <laughs> and so like you know the next thing you know there's a fight because you know they've gotten a, one of the people have gotten some type of you know um inside information about somebody and they and they're gonna go you know start some drama so in that sense, you know, that's the way it's kind of, uh, you know, scripted. In that. scripted. Yeah, because, right. again, like, you have to. Otherwise, there's just be a bunch of, like, like what is this garbage? <laughs> like, you yeah. just feel yeah. <laughs> like, like a bunch of women doing, like, none of, this, none of them cared about Brett Michael. None of them talked about Brett Michael. They were talking about themselves and being on the show. <laughs> Do you have any more questions for Daisy about Rock of Love before we move on to Daisy of Love? Yes. Okay, so, cool. I'll be right back. back off of that. If you had the option to choose a reboot, which show would you go back on? Um, I'm not really sure, actually. I mean, I might, I might choose both of them. Really, I mean, maybe, probably, maybe Daisy of Love a little bit more, but um, you know. Rock Love, I, I was, you know, I was in a novice. I mean, I'm still a novice, but it's still, you know, it was what it was. I was sort of like a, like a, like a victim of circumstances, like in the, in the, um, sort of in the arms of, you know, just the, at the mercy of like whoever. So that was kind of fun to experience, I think. And, um, and just random, you know, and, and I was really just not thinking about anything. I was just there, you know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't being contrived necessarily. I wasn't, you know, so I kind of like that. But as far as Daisy of Love goes, I, I might probably maybe that, maybe, you know. Do you have any more questions about Rock of Love? Okay. 